It's Platt, and today we head to the Philippines. That's next with Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer we have today is San Miguel Light, also known as San Miguel Light. It comes with us from the fine folks at San Miguel Brewing. Now, their story starts all the way back in the year 1889 when a Manila businessman known as Enrique Maria Barreto applied to Spanish royalty, the Spanish Viceroy. At the time, Spain had colonized the Philippines. He applied for a royal grant to open a brewery, which he received. And the next year, in 1890, he did finally open the brewery and named it La Fabricia de Cerveza San Miguel. San Miguel, at the time, was a district, suburb, area, neighborhood, whatever you want to call it, of Manila. So this, he basically named it after the neighborhood. Move ahead to 1914, and San Miguel began exporting their beers. Very early in the game, they got in the export business. 1948, they opened their first brewery outside of the Philippines, which was located in Hong Kong, a big, bustling international city. Very logical choice. Uh, 1991, with the fall of communism in Russia and also just the opening up of other communist countries, San Miguel was able to get into China and Vietnam, two really big markets. Today, they are the largest brewer in the Philippines. By far, they have roughly a 90% market share, which a lot of the countries wouldn't be tolerated. But I think in a little bit, you'll understand why. Uh, they are also the 10th largest brewery in Asia, and considering the population base, that is pretty impressive. Uh, they have five breweries in the Philippines and five breweries outside the Philippines. They are exported to 60 different countries on five different continents around the world. Again, a big global brand that you may or may not know of, actually. Um, the company itself is a joint venture between SMC, which owns 51%, and Karen, which owns Karen, Karen Brewing, which owns the other 49%. Now, SMC stands for San Miguel Corporation. They are more than just a brewery. They are not only the largest brewery in uh, the Philippines, they are the largest food and beverage company. They have meats, dairy products, you name it in the food, you know, food world. They also are into real estate, oil refining. They do a little bit of everything. So I, I don't think they're worried about uh, monopolistic issues, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, real quick, let's talk about uh, some of the beers. Smaller line of beers, not not real big line, about six to eight beers, all lager style beers. You're not going to see a porter and IPA in this. Uh, first is San Miguel Pale Pills and 5% ABV. This is their oldest brand and the oldest beer brand in the Philippines and in South Asia. The brand's been around pretty much since day one, about 130 years. Fairly impressive there. Next is Red Horse, 8% ABV. This is a high-gravity lager. Even though it's called Red Horse, the beer is a kind of a deep gold, almost getting into a, a copper. This is a beer you actually would not be able to find in the Philippines. It's for the international market only. Lastly is San Miguel Cerveza Negra, 5% ABV. This is a full-body dark lager. Why this really stuck out to me, because I immediately thought of another former uh, Spanish colony, which was Mexico. And a lot of the earlier brewers and the beers they produced, they were German brewers that came over there, and they, they produced a lot of Vienna lagers and slightly darker lagers, think Negro Modelo. So I found that, you know, it, it's kind of interesting, two former Spanish colonies on the other side of the world had a similar style of beer. Kind of a cool story in a way. Well, before we try this particular beer, though, let's check out the stats. Gang, today I want to kind of change things up a little bit. Normally in this part of my Platt's Beer of the Week video, I kind of talk about a secondary topic. You know, if I'm reviewing a German beer, maybe I talk about Oktoberfest or something like that. I want to change this segment of, of the video to um, kind of a Q&A thing. I get a ton of questions in the comment sections, and if you've ever been in the comment section, you, you see I do a pretty good job of replying. A lot of those, though, are a lot of times either, you know, silly little comments or maybe short questions like, what's the ABV of this? And that's about it. But occasionally, I'll get a question that really kind of needs to be fleshed out. And, a, you know, writing a multi-paragraph answer in the comments is really not functional. So what I want to start doing is I want to start answering questions 
here in the videos, you know, once a week, uh, upload these, you know, beer videos. So, you know, I can always kind of keep fairly relevant on your questions. Uh, I would like you to send the questions uh, to my email address, platsboozeblog at gmail.com. If you would put questions for Platt in the subject uh, line, this way I could kind of flesh things out. Also, too, if you ask me kind of a specific question, I'd kind of have time to research and what, what have you. But I want to give kind of more complex questions, a little more time to answer in a proper format. Also, too, I think some people may also have the question, so why not kind of kill two birds with one stone if you if you like. So that once again, that is uh, platsboozeblog at gmail.com. Questions for Platt in the subject line. All right, enough of that. Let's drink a beer. Typical golden lager color. All right, nice head. Pour a slight bit of grass. We have a nice, nice head. White foamy head. Oh, plenty of bubbles. Let's take a quick spill. I can't. I can't name that smell. It's not funky. It's not terrible. And it, it's similar to a lot of the other lagers, but just... It's not hops, but it doesn't smell like traditional malt. I'm now I'm really interested to see what this tastes like. Let's give her a try. Well, it is a light beer. I gotta remember that. But that is really light. It's really light. Not a ton of flavor. Um, Right at the very end, I get just a slight bit of the, and we've talked about some of the various, you know, clear bottles, green bottles, do the light exposure. You can get a little flunk off that, you know, kind of skunks the beer up. Just a hit, but I mean, it's very light. Like, to a certain extent, you're like, oh, there's flavor there, and you can kind of like, oh, that skunkiness. But, but, but when you first try, let me go in to reassure them. Yeah, you're almost kind of happy that skunkiness comes at the end because it's like, oh, okay, there's some flavor there. This goes down really easy. Now, that being said, uh, just due to the heat and humidity and the climate there in Manila, and if I was, uh, I think they refer to us American tourists as Howleys, or no, no, not Howleys, uh, Canoes. Howleys are Hawaii. Canoes. Uh, if you're a canoe down there, just, you know, wanting to cleanse the palate or something to drink, this would go down real easy. Uh, this is definitely a hot weather beer. I will say this. Uh, if some, if I'm working outside or something like that, somebody brought a 12 of this, all right, we, it'll work because it'll just go down really easy. But it's very simple beer. <laughs> it is a very simple beer, to put it lightly. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the videos because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can, you know, short questions in the comments or longer questions at platsboozeblog or platsboozeblog at gmail.com. Well, until next time, bottoms up.